<laughs> Welcoming you to another episode of Jim and Rob Over Analyze Movies, the live video podcast where for people who want a deeper conversation about the films we watch today. And uh, yeah, today we are going to be talking about Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, now, folks, before we, before we get into it, it is based on a true story. Uh, and, uh, so I think it behooves us to have a quick chat about historicity. Um, now this is something that we can really get in the weeds on and depending on the film, you know, oh, it's grossly inaccurate or it's incredibly accurate or boy, they get the costumes really white, uh, right. Sorry. Um, that said, I think what's really important here is to use a film like this as an opportunity to, if you're, if you enjoyed the film or you really found the film upsetting or whatever, to look into the actual historiography of this, uh, of the film. And then when you're thinking about the film and you're comparing it to the history, uh, the, the actual history as best as that can be found. Um, ask yourself the question, why did the filmmaker make the choices they did? Why didn't they talk about that? Was it strictly as this the usual excuse, oh, well, we're trying to condense a lot of people into a lot of stuff? Or did they have another agenda? Um, thinking about Napoleon here. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what I did, and uh, uh, this film is based on a true crime story. Uh, it's based on the Osage murders in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, between 1910 and 1930, hundreds of Osage First Nation members were murdered simply to steal their oil income inheritances. Uh, now, in the description, you'll find a link to the documentary Reign of Terror, Murder and Mayhem in the Osage Hills. It's from the Oklahoma Education Television Authority, basically Oklahoma's PBS. And it tries to tell the Osage tribe's story in their own words, in these tribal members' own words, in their own memories and uh, oral history. I strongly recommend you check it out. Uh, and like I said, yeah, they, PBS put it up on YouTube. It's accessible to all. Um, now with that out of the way, and, uh, maybe with an, with a quick unmute, let us welcome our, my co-host with the most, my borscht bro, Mr. Jim Chaboyko. <laughs> Whoopsie. And maybe get my script I... out of his face. Uh oh, <laughs> I thought it was some sort of reveal or something. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? Doing some mime or something. Great, great. Yeah, no, just uh, yeah, enjoying the new year, enjoying the thaw. I got to shovel off the roof, uh, I think, at some point in the next two days. But uh, other than that, uh, everything's good. Excellent. Um, uh, do we have anyone in the chat? You were mentioned you saw a yeah. couple of people in the chat. We have uh, Jelly. Uh, last time I checked, uh, Jelly Duck One Hundred. Uh, uh, There's an the, air horn for him. The continent to the left of us, and then <laughs> uh, we got Walt as well. Uh, Walt sixty five. Uh, coming from the uh, best coast there. So yeah. All right, fantastic. Well, maybe some uh, lurkers too, but yeah. <laughs> anyhow. You know what? And to those lurkers, feel free to chime in at any time into the chat, and I will uh, I'll do my best to uh, catch up with the chat as we uh, dig into the story. Uh, now, Jim, before we get into the spoiler zone, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, why don't you give us your see it or skip it take on this uh spoiler free take on this film uh, and uh let's start with uh is it a see it or skip it for you jim yeah absolutely a, a see it uh it's an epic it, it, it's uh i don't know if i'd call it rollicking but it's a uh, it, it's got tons going on it's one of 
you can see Scorsese applying his vision uh, to something with a slightly different setting. It's not all that different from some of the mob stories that he does, but, uh, you know, you get the montages of violence and that kind of thing. But he seems to be uh, fairly in his element uh, with this one. And, uh, yeah, I, there's other issues going on in the movie, too, and we can talk about that. But uh, it, it's fully engaging. I, 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 I thought the runtime was not an issue for me. So, yeah, really fascinating, great um, performances. And, and For uh, myself, yeah, I'm going to say skip it. Oh, yeah? I'm... Yeah, Jim, you know what? It's it's interesting. I'm and this is something you and I had talked about uh before. I had a really hard time with this film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some of it is is that you and I as we've watched a number of uh films about let's say the indigenous experience or using the indigenous experience to color other kinds of films. Um, I got to admit, like watching this, especially from one of the criminals' perspectives, I'm yeah. like, I'm not having a good time here. Mm -hmm. um, now, beyond that, and that's that's a political skip it, I guess, or a, yeah, a political skip it. Uh, mm. I did have, I don't think this is as tight as Scorsese's other work um, and there's a part of me that thinks this should have either been heck add another hour and make it a real mini series um, or a two parter uh, mm. or yeah cut a bunch back and and make it tighter uh, mm. and and really commit to the bit you know, that you're going to make a movie about this. Another criminal family, they just happen to be hillbillies in Oklahoma. And I know those aren't hillbillies. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my take. Um, and with that, folks, if you've lasted this long, <laughs> <laughs> I will shamelessly beg you for a, a like, a subscribe, and... Uh, Oh my goodness, do we have a repaired bell? I fixed it. And yet it doesn't ring. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there's there's a ring. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Uh with that out of the way, let's let's jump into uh, let's jump into Whoopsie. The spoiler yeah. zone. Wah, wah, wah. All righty. Um, yeah, Jim, I've got a number of questions for you. Sure. Um, and I wanted to start. Although I have many comments about the Freemasons. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it, Scorsese's tropes, let's say, certain mm -hmm. kind of story elements he, he loves to have in all his crime family movies. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's my first question. Although I think we've foreshadowed our answer already. Um, yeah. Was Scorsese the right guy to tell this story? Uh, I mean, depending on who you ask. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm asking uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> this is For not, me, uh, I mean, yeah. it's... Uh, it, it's his wheelhouse. Like, yeah, he's going to go from... He he would never do a movie from Molly's point of view, the, the, the main... Uh, the main Osag, uh, Osagi, I want to say Osage, but Osagi uh, character. Um, yeah. I don't think he would do that. I don't think it would appeal to him. He is much... It's not uh, his thing. You're no, it's right. not his yeah. thing. And so I think that's why you you ultimately got the the story that you got and the one that's attracting some criticism especially from the first nations uh, side of things i get it i fully get it um there has not been nearly uh enough from from their point of view um i always remember that that uh, movie for, about stephen biko starring kevin klein <laughs> <You know, laughs> they couldn't even mean make biko the main uh, character that's south africa though but it's sort of the same thing where yeah it's about uh you know this uh this 
can I? Do they say tribe down there? I'll just say the first. This just, First I, Nations. I, I've used both. I've, uh, yeah. First Nation and tribe. Yeah. Because that is the that that is the language, uh, indigenous people in that part of, mm -hmm. let's say Turtle Island, Canamara, yeah. Um, yeah. use. So. Yeah. So I mean. Would it have been nice to have it from their point of view? Uh, absolutely, but again, I don't think I don't think uh, it would have been a Scorsese product if he, you know, he just happened to be the guy who did it, and this is the this is the angle that he approached it from. The uh, book as well. Let's not forget it's based on a book, and the book itself is very non cinematic. It's very much a work of journalism and history. Yeah. It's based on documents. So there was one conversation on I think CBC's Commotion where um, a First Nations commenter. I can't remember exactly who it was that said, well, they kind of, you know, even in the book, they drop Molly's story. And I don't know if it's so much dropping Molly's story as it is. There's not that much documentation on the last 20 years of her life, you know? Yeah. And so David Grant, he's going to write it based on like he does. He's not unlike here. He's not making up. Uh, make out scenes in the car or that, you know, uh, merit arguments within a marriage. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, was he the right person to do it? Uh, yeah. I, I, the politically probably not, but uh, I, I think he still did a, a fairly good job and none of the major well the molly character of course is not just a supporting character she's like the anchor of the movie so you know um it's not it's not dances with wolves <laughs> it's not little big man from 1970 but uh, well, yeah, yeah that's a, it's it's great you mentioned dances with wolves jim um and maybe this is i i know even for myself I probably been, would have been more into this film if it came out in the 90s. Mm. Uh, whereas now it's like it seems it seems almost a little late. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that part of the problem maybe. Mm. That That's makes interesting. Any sense. Just to um, add on to what mm -hmm. I was saying really quickly, it's the timing is interesting because we watched the like I watched this this month in January um, on my TV. I didn't see it in the theater, but it also it sort of dovetailed nicely with my wife and I finishing off Reservation Dogs, which is all from, or you know yeah. Aside from a few roles on screen, it's all First Nations, writers, directors, actors, and it's a phenomenal show. And it's also set in Oklahoma. Uh, that's where the yeah. where the characters all live. I mean, it sort of travels around a bit, but but that so you know when you watch Reservation Dogs, uh, great series. Um, you can kind of see the vision, and you can kind of see why some people might have been disappointed by this one. Well, and, and I guess it's, and I can't, you know what, Jim, I'm, let's say, setting aside the perspective for a second. And that was another, actually, not even setting it aside. I, maybe one of the reasons I really struggled is, well, I want more Millie. I just want yeah. the, the woman, the, as best as we can tell about the historical person, this was a remarkable woman. Mm -hmm. who you know achieved quite a bit in terrible like in tragic circumstances uh so a part of it is sometimes your a film introduces you to a character that is a, and a a performance that is so strong that you're like why why aren't we making the movie about her why <laughs> mm -hmm. Ernest is a schmuck Ernest is a murdering schmuck. Yeah. I don't care about Ernest. I care about her. And mm. I want more Millie. So that that's another thing that I think I, I struggled with in this uh, mm -hmm. with this film. Um, let's go back to the running time. You had said it, it didn't bother you. Um, you were you were fine with the running time. And I gotta admit, as somebody who's like, I just was like, oh, do I oh my goodness, that's outrageous, but Maybe I should order uh, uh, the Blu-ray of Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It clocks in at a similar length. Um, 
I don't know, Jim. I I this flick, I'm still thinking it's like, yeah, this this could have been a mini series. Mm. And if it was a mini series, we could have spent more time with a lot of characters that I think we we could have gotten to know better, both criminal and non-criminal. Yeah. You yeah. know, the uh uh Osagi um and uh and the 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 local scumbags yeah. you know stealing from them um preying on them uh, mm. and i think that may have made this whole experience better for me but it, it, most of the time i don't feel like we feel like they we rush past them all except millie we don't get a chance to really get to know her mother she's mostly just sitting there and I yeah. get that they're ill and everything, but I, yeah, th there's all these other characters that we could have gotten to know better, and mm -hmm. I don't think we did. And already halfway through the movie, and we're like, oh, we're mur murdering them all now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I say her mom, Molly's mom, is a tattoo cardinal too, so yeah. you, you'd think, uh, you know, she can obviously hold her own after uh, <laughs> I don't know, fifty <laughs> years in show business. Uh, yeah, it's not or like something. she doesn't have the chops. No, no, that's for sure. But uh, okay, yeah. Well, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I I I get that too. Um, it it's almost I I read the and this is the second time I've read it just to get a sense of before I saw the movie where the cinema was in the book and and you know I I think it's it, it's this movie is built almost independently of of some of the book anyway they use the basic story and. And mm -hmm. and you know the 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 certain beats and things like that. Yeah, uh, obviously it's based on a, on a real story, but but yeah, a lot of the a lot of it is just you know from the mind of the writers, right? Really, so um, yeah, just the in the in the micro in the moments, right? In in in, in the events, the actual events and conversations and stuff. So, Walt says, uh, interesting that the running time is by far the most commented on criticism of the <laughs> film. I, you know what, and it's, it's interesting. I, again, I'm not, hey, the riff on a far better critic, Roger Ebert, where it's a great movie, not long enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but here it really does. This is, how did I put it? There's been a growing list of long let's yeah. say theatrical to streaming made by streamers mm -hmm. you know that that seem to be mini series in all but name yeah and that's what i think about when i think about this when i think about the irishman mm -hmm. you know it's like you know couldn't we have just done with another half an hour of especially, you know, side plot and character development for all these other players? Because what the hell? You have four hours and then mm -hmm. just four out and then just turn it into what it wants to be. Yeah. Which is yeah. A, a true crime miniseries. Yeah. And that yeah. might have been that may have addressed a lot of the issues I have with it, not just the perspective, but by giving the uh, Osagi more weight mm -hmm. so that at least I feel like I'm not like, oh, look, and here's an, another horrible <laughs> crime against the indigenous told from the white guy's perspective. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what we need. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank goodness, the white criminal. <laughs> I mean, having said that, the his whole view is yeah. taken care of here. H having said that, though, the whole town is rotten. Like all the white people, until I think uh, Jesse Plemons comes on the screen in Act Three or Act Eight or whatever it is. Uh, you know, there I was just rewatching a little bit of it this evening and. There's that scene where the car salesman saying, oh, please buy this car. Oh, yeah. My kid's got <laughs> asthma and my wife has got the vapors and, you know, yeah. d d I yeah. don't know how to exist. And, and then they sort of say, we'll take one. And he goes, oh, if you get a, a busted tire or you run out of gas, just come on by and buy a new one. Like he's, you know, it, totally. Well, 
it, it just it's said they're they're all just so thoroughly horrible uh for well, the most and, part and also i it's almost a how, how did i put it jim and this is like like I was uncomfortable there, not just with that, like they're almost cartoonish mm. level of huckstery, hucksterness yeah. is yeah. that it almost kind of implies, or it seems to me like the Osagi are treated in the film like lottery winners. Mm. And that they are. And I'm not saying it's complete. Like the scene you're talking about, the uh, Osagi, the couple, they don't seem they're not they don't seem like totally you know taken in by this. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like Scorsese or any of these other films where there's a whole bunch of criminality at the beginning and usually kind of a rise mm. as they go buy stuff and everything. You don't see in any of his mob movies, you don't see the shopkeepers going, ooh, here's a guido we can take advantage of. Mm. You know, he doesn't do that. But here, all of a sudden, it seems to be that they're just overwhelmed, like unsophisticates, yeah. overwhelmed with... um all these hucksters when at this it, where there's very little treatment on how if there is any infantilization that was just the american government you know mm -hmm. how many of these people like it wasn't just millie how many of these people were just automatically declared incompetent yeah like that was an outside view and it's almost like we're getting more of that here mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Does that, does yeah. that make any sense to you? Like, what do yeah. you, it, does that ring true to you at all? Yeah, I mean, there's it. It definitely. I mean, I'll say this though, and I was thinking about this this weekend was that even though they're ridiculously rich, they've become r ridiculously rich in a in a short amount of time, and it's essentially a kind of a nouveau riche situation and they're spending a lot of money but they're never portrayed as uh or I, at least i didn't think so they were never portrayed as being vulgar uh you know like the vulgar nouveau, nouveau riche that you sometimes see on american television or say on something about russians or, or you know that kind of they're thing not, it, uh, yeah that, no you're right we don't even see that yeah. um where it gets really bad before everything starts falling apart in the wolf of wall street yeah, yeah. But, but that said, that's because Scorsese, like they are, they are still the victim. Yeah, yeah. Um, they seem more stunned than anything. Well, I would. I'm more thinking that we don't even see though the nouveau riche criminal element being mm -hmm. vulgar. Do you know what I mean? Like. Ernest, why isn't he getting that treatment? Yeah. Like yeah, he's actually maybe they just even though he's got access to all this money, he's complaining to the uh the the oh good lord, the funeral guy. Yeah. You're charging me Osage prices. <laughs> you know. Yes, this is yeah. A great bit of racism, <laughs> but yeah. also like you know, I was almost like in a, in another Scorsese movie, it'd be like, who cares? He wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, so or, or why he might have this one. Why this one where the Osage are the ones who are like get, always getting pay, paying Osage prices. Yeah. But the white guy is like, ah. Oh, Hey, I'm no rube. Not like these folks. Well, you know, maybe if it was set in a place like Brooklyn or something, um, you know, Leo would have taken the funeral guy out or sort of, er, sorry, Ernest would have taken him out. You know, you're overcharging me and would have, you know, beat him with an inch of his life. But, you know, 
I'm well, just the, talking you know, about the conflict at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... like the, what? These criminals are never really easy with their money. Although they must have been... I mean, we do see a couple of scenes of gambling. Oh, that, but they must have been because after... Uh, apparently, old King Hale there, mm -hmm. a great... I mean, it's a family member saying, hearing them say it, but it seems to fit that kind of, I'm sorry, I got to drop an F-bomb, <laughs> that kind of piece of <laughs> thing to say that this kind of criminal would say is if Ernest had just kept his mouth shut, we'd all be rich. But you were all rich. Yeah. You were all rich like <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much more... You greedy f <laughs> Yeah. It was it was never enough. It was never going to be enough, probably. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they just had to murder the whole town or, <laughs> or try to anyway. Hundreds. But, hundreds. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? Um, yeah. Walt says, uh, he, he compares it to Goodfellas. And I, I don't know about you, Jim. I thought about Goodfellas a lot when I was watching this. A little bit, and, yeah. And, uh, and he says, uh, you know, it's a complex story, lots of characters, um, tight, you know, shorter. It's still not, not a nine, <laughs> what does SNL say? <laughs> Certainly not a <laughs> movie, but. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, I was just trying to think of how long the uh, Lord of the Rings uh, extend mix, uh, dance mix uh, oh. movies are, um, <laughs> and because they did they go from like two forty five to three ten or something like that. I think they're still shorter <laughs> than this one, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to watch it again and see why uh, why they were. Or what he was trying to do with that length of movie. I think yeah. I imagine once you cross the two and a half hour barrier, there's other things going on and other rhythms you're well, sort of attending to and that kind of thing. Well, you know, it, it, it becomes a court thing at a, for a while. And yeah, well, and that's again, I'm coming back to the miniseries and I'm coming back to Apple Plus. Mm -hmm. And are they going? Oh no, we got plenty of footage. Marty, yeah. will, we'll we'll be cutting Marty another check, and he'll be. We'll get the super extended cut, and it'll be really obvious for our subscribers on where they can stop yeah. because it, he's not the only one. Recently, said, "Oh, I can easily make another cut." <laughs> you know, apparently, there's another hour to Napoleon. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Rebel Moon. Uh, uh -huh. Zack Snyder is saying, oh, yeah, no, uh, that was that was the PG one for uh, for Netflix. But that was just the moose bouche. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they all have this thing in common where I'm like, I'm finding them long and boring. Mm. You know, like, whereas it's like, maybe you just say, no, we're making a miniseries here. Yeah, and just yeah. be that because then maybe this would I'd have a different experience. Um, Walt says, uh, yeah, the he addresses the theme in mob films too. I'm gonna buy the most expensive Christmas tree there is, the crass home styles of the girlfriends and that, eh? Mm. Uh, but yeah, you're right, like. And and it could very well be that maybe this is the best Scorsese could do, given that he made it now. And yeah. that Scorsese could have made something that had a lot less time with, you know, a Millie or any of the other indigenous characters, uh, real people. Like, sh this Millie woman is a real, real yeah woman who did amazing things as yeah. a diabetic who's being poisoned yes by yeah. her husband yeah yeah Ernest the ostensible schmuck here I mean I picked our title because I could think Jim it was it's like here's the woman going really this guy this is who I picked yeah <laughs> Anyway, um, let me let me ask you this. 
what were like I saw you could almost play a game uh, like a drinking game of spot the Scorsese trope and uh, I, I expect Walt to chime in on this one as well but I sure. certainly like I mean I saw a couple what were some of your faves where you go you just as you're watching it's like oh that's, now I know I'm in a Scorsese movie well, like I said earlier, the the montages earlier, uh, you know, were showing you know multiple deaths. Uh, yeah. I, I they weren't like very quick cut, and sometimes they were interrupted by something. But there's a whole segment where they show mm -hmm. various members of the of the, uh, of the tribe uh, of the Osage being Nation being yeah. murdered or just being in bed. Like you know, we become uh, familiar with their funeral it's a death rites. And, oh, that's... yeah, literally being in bed or propped up yeah. in in their own beds with their hands on their you know chests and things like that. And and so there's the that kind of thing struck. I'm su I was surprised that there were no Rolling Stones songs uh, to, to go along with it. But <laughs> I, I I don't think all the music was of it uh, of its time contemporaneous because there's a few that I suspect came out a little bit later. But uh, um, yeah, it, it uh, there's that. Uh, there's a couple of neat flourishes. There's a lot of the sort of 180. I don't know if it's quite 360. There's one pan that it, the day turns into night, and then they show the town, you know, as 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 it's panning. Yeah. Uh, so there's these little, you know, they don't call tons of attention to themselves. You sort of have to pay attention to them um, to notice them. But there's a, a, some some uh, you know veteran director playfulness that I that I quite yeah. liked, uh, and a lot of the 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 crowd scenes, including the one there's a big you know parade and the KKK is marching through town proudly and you know Ernest says hey he's how's it going and he's like, yeah yeah and I just think Oof. the sign of the racist times wow yeah how, how really did anybody make it out of that place I don't know but uh yeah um so there's some of that in that that just sort of that luxuriousness of having the whole town with the storefronts and that yeah. kind of thing I don't know if that's you know necessarily a Scorsese thing but well, just it, I think he he liked getting his hands dirty with that kind of stuff it did make a it does remind you going back to Goodfellas, but there's been a few of those that idea of the smaller community and the I, I'm especially I'm thinking of Goodfellas now, but mm. even Mean Streets or oh, what the heck, De Niro. Well, the, there's the famous opening shot of, or I don't know if it's opening, but one of the shots in Goodfellas where they go in through, yeah. you know, down the stairs yeah. into the basement, oh, into the, the restaurant, the, tracking, the big oneer. Yeah. The, the tracking so there's, there's I think there's smaller versions well, of that in this, but uh, yeah. I'm looking for different, like the evil father figure. It's kind mm. of the warped mentor. I, mm. the wise old man, will guide you on the adventure into criming, and yeah. then. I will try and eat you, mm. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it, it, and how De Niro has become this Fagin-esque kind of guy for him in half his movies where mm. he's like, I'm going to show you how it all works, you know, for, for my purposes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and I thought that was kind of a, very much a storytelling trope of Scorsese's that it's like. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I yeah. know kind of the movie I'm in. Um, and even, maybe even Millie does in that, does kind of fit a girlfriend trope. Although I'm still sort of stuck with it's like, what is she seeing this idiot? You know, like there's yeah. no, th this is, I think this is a real criticism of the film. It's like, I am not buying this relationship, not once. Mm -hmm. Like, at the beginning. Like, you, I totally bought, uh, oh, who was it in Goodfellas? Like, I bought their relationship. Yeah. I bought how crazy it got with Sharon Stone and De Niro in Casino. Casino. You know, mm -hmm. you get the the fire and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling that. And all I'm thinking is it, it won't be the first time a woman has, you know, just gotten involved with a moron. Yeah. yeah. But 
Couldn't they have given us something? Couldn't Scorsese have given us something to show where we can kind of go, ah, ah, poor Millie, no, don't. It's mm. more, Jesus, Millie, you're smarter than this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe it was... Uh... She, she, they are talking, you know, she says he is, he calls himself handsome, you know, in that one of those yeah. opening scenes when he's, uh, which was actually a really good scene where he's trying to charm her and she's trying to not be charmed, but I, I don't think it's having much, uh, she's having much success and she's, she's just trying to be, you know, in the back seat and, you know, trying to, uh, Disregard. Well, I don't know. Disregard, but she's just saying. You know, she's muttering under her breath in Osage yeah. and and that kind of thing. And um, and it's you know the the that that I really enjoyed that scene because it, it should you know he was chipping away at her, chipping away, and she was sort of starting to laugh at some of his jokes and that kind of thing. So, you know, it 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 maybe it was a gradual thing. I yeah. There's I, there's I, a there's a thing you here. Get there. But yeah, I think there needed to be more fire at the beginning, mm -hmm. and 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 by the time you get there, you're like, okay, well, at least now I can kind of buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm already, I... I'm an hour and a half in. A... <laughs> might as well. This is a sunk cost. Who might a question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, I got if Jim, honestly. I would have bailed on this flick in the first half an hour if it wasn't for the show. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I would have bailed. I would have been like, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I would have given it. I got past the first five minutes, although that was hard. And and again, only because of all the films we've watched now for the show that center the indigenous experience. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, wow, I'm going to see a thing about a terrible bit of history. Ah, from the schmuck <laughs> criminal's perspective. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, which, too, that it does. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say the way the book that is, is written, too, because like historical writing, um, it's based on the documents and, you know, the documents yeah. in this case sort of favor, they're heavily weighted on the side of the bad guys, uh, you know, of, for instance, court records and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it, just live in your life. You don't create a lot of documents yeah. or you don't, you know, the, the kind of thing that a, histor a historian but, or journalist uh, would be after. So I think that's sort of just a natural way that the story went in this case well, if it's written about again in 50 years you might have a completely different take i on mean it. well first of all there was an indigenous filmmaker in my research found an indigenous filmmaker back in the 20s mm. who actually made a movie about it because it was national you know american yeah. national news was it the 20s or the early 30s of course it's a apparently like a true lost document but and here's okay. It, if Quentin Tarantino oh can my. make, <laughs> like, let's say Django Unchained, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> why and i don't mean why can't he make it because it really would have been a different movie yeah. but <laughs> yes. you can infer a bit you're already inferring a lot about the conversations you th there's nothing stopping you from going okay at least we got the basic facts together here i could <laughs> heck if oklahoma public television can do it so, mm. too, can Martin Scorsese and the writer go, let's get the oral history and see what kind of different angle we could give Yeah, this set of historical facts. I mean, because otherwise you're really just saying, you know, the same people, the same pieces of shit who said, you know what, Ernest, I know that right after you did your time for all this crap, you went out. And you stole from these people again. 
but now we really think you've learned your lesson. Here is a f***ing pardon. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. A pardon. <laughs> this yeah, is as you how, do. Yeah. And, and I think this is what the film doesn't touch on at all, and that's a choice that Scorsese is making. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a documentary, but he's deciding. He knows it's it's there. He's deciding not to talk about the fact that it isn't just a criminal family. It isn't just Hale and you know Byron and the Ernest. Yeah. The it's it's the whole community, the oh, whole yeah. white community, including folks. That you don't get the governor <laughs> to pardon you unless it's like oh we're all in on this scam Mm -hmm. you know we were all in on it we're all you know how many how many white fortunes how many fortunes were made off of murdering these people and then ignoring it and burying it and you do things like let someone you know you do (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what? We got to let this idiot off so that no one asks too many hard questions about where uh, my mansion came from. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the... that's, that's a, that's a choice, a creative choice that, Hey, as an artist, he has every right to make. And as a critic, I have every right to ask about why didn't you talk about that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, you know that uh, it seems to me to be a, th- um, a characteristic of American true crime is that you have sort of a terminal event, and then that you know so and so goes to jail, and then you know whatever. In, if you're often Problem if you're watching solved. the English, Check. yeah, if you're watching English stuff, they actually seem to follow it. Yeah. Uh, and and it's funny too if you're well not funny but it's peculiar uh, you know English Australian any country that has a sort of a less um, punitive uh, atmosphere than the states mm-hmm. you know you often the, the race to find the killer and then yeah you know this person takes out two or three people they get caught they go to jail and they do their time and they get let out <laughs> that's your thing you know like it's. Well- kind of crazy but uh yeah it the, the another aspect that's especially galling about this story is that burkhart and hale live to be in their 80s and 90s oh yeah you know like that's your that's your punishment is a long life a long life <laughs> yeah long after taking life, so many complaining about how somebody didn't <laughs> if, if Ernest just had kept his mouth shut we'd all be rich Richer than yeah, he's we the one. Are now, yeah, exactly. Like he's the one. Um, Walt brings up, uh, he mentions a few things, and where, how did he put it here? It's no Napoleon, family plot. When directors hit their peak, and what happens afterward? Is this part of what happens when a big name director like Scorsese? Or Ridley Scott, I, even you know what, Zack Snyder, and a stri- a streamer comes to him. Somebody who's like, "Oh, we really want that prestige." All of a sudden, there are no editorial controls. There mm-hmm. are no, "Wow, this seems kind of fat," and I'm not sure what you're going for here. And could you start the movie like later in the story, or yeah. You know, nobody's getting killed, and then it seems like a big rush to kill people at the middle. In the middle, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, yeah, you're saying that they're allowed just too much creative is, freedom. Well, or? I'm, I'm kind of wondering is that is that part of the problem as as a director, like in their later years? Yeah. I mean, you didn't see that in the Fablemans. Jeez, I, I, I yeah. <laughs> There's a movie where you've got a director late in his career going, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me school y'all on how, how, the, how you make movies. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, it's a tricky one. You know, it, would all directors want a two hour cut of their movie? This is, you know, the, the, almost no creative work is ever truly finished. Right. Um, the, 
but that there comes a time that they have to hand it in. I, I would think that most directors would veer towards something a bit longer. I just watched Fallen Leaves on the weekend. That was 81 minutes. Uh, 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 the the finish uh, uh, the finish movie there. So that that was a completely different uh, kettle of fish. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, in in a way, I sort of when I was younger and and sort of first getting into movies and watching the Late Show and keeping an eye on the the first thing I would do is look at what late movies were on that week when the Saturday paper came in, just to say you know ooh what's what can I tape, yeah. uh, you know if a three hour movie came around I would I would have thought to myself oh right on you know that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be an education yeah I, I so in a way I still sort of look forward to these big honking. Uh, movies myself are they indulgent yeah um, well no i but i don't think lawrence of arabia is an indulgent film i don't think yeah. the great escape was indulgent like mm. those lean david lean <laughs> yeah. was talk about uh compensating for something <laughs> yeah but I, I the what i'm really talking about is is there a point past, and, and you see this in books as well. Mm. You know, I'm thinking of the later Harry Potter books where they started real door stoppers. Mm. And you're like, did it, is, it, there's really no fat in there. Everything was required. Jimmy Fallon said on the uh, SNL update all those years ago, uh, her next book will be Harry Potter and the Death of Trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, but by then there is no no one's telling J.K. Rowling, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta trim this back. This mm. it's taking forever to get anywhere. You're killing us. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing us, and all these trees. And I I'm wondering if it's the same thing, or if again, is it also these streamers going? Yeah, no, no, people. People like a long one because they're drifting off in an hour and then they pause it and then they come back. And mm -hmm. like, is the medium, the streaming medium changing films? Because that's the yeah. other thing. And films have been getting longer. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, especially as the theatrical part is more of a prestige thing. The, Exhibitors don't have the pull they once did where they're saying, what do you, yeah, we're not putting that three hour nonsense in our theater. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. charge enough for it. We can't, you know, we can't turn the room <laughs> over quickly enough. Want like, some more popcorn? <laughs> 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 but now they're, well, we've experienced this and now it's like, well, no, we'll, we'll just charge everyone a premium price for a seat that mm -hmm. you're going to need the comfort of because you're going to be here for the next three and a half hours. Yes. Yeah. Plus commercials. Um, yeah. I, and I, I guess that's the, so I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying it's no editorial control. It could also be just, no, that's exactly what the customer wants. It's like, you make it as long as you want, man. We're, we're going to make money out of this. Yeah. Your yeah. your crazy ass long movie is going to keep these people's eyeballs on our service that much longer. And as they all move And away into from other services. Away from other services. Mm -hmm. And as they all move into commercials again, it's like, oh, three and a half hour movie that we can put all kinds of commercials in there. Yeah. You know? So yeah. It, it's, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I have an answer here. I'm no? just kind of wondering. Yeah, no, it's a good thought to throw up there. I, I well, think Walt that... says, uh, chimed in, Goodfellas was two hours and 25 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to I have to think, I was going to say I guarantee they do this, but you have to think that they are measuring that. They can, you know, they can, they can uh, measure all mm. kinds of things, and I guarantee you they're measuring, I'll say it, I guarantee you they're measuring people who take a break. Like watch oh, half of it absolutely. and then go on to watch it. I get emails from from Netflix saying, "Would you like to watch this again? <laughs> like the the thing well, that you watched six months ago? Do you want to continue? Or do you want to continue? Like emails? Yeah. Like you yeah. started this but you never finished it? Yeah. Um. Well, and of course it's all automated, but uh, yeah, I, I have to think that that's all part of their thing. But 
three and a half hour movie on Apple is how many episodes of uh, Love is Blind on Netflix that people are watching, <laughs> saying they're the same eyes, but, uh, well, you know. Yeah, they have all that data. Yeah. They're, and they're now starting to share some of that with chumps like us. And because of the actors and writers strike, we're going to see even more data because mm. they have to share this stuff with them. Now, of course, the, what's still going to be for them the biggest driver is does it bump up subscriptions? And yeah. I think that's where Scorsese, Zack Snyder, uh, Ridley Scott, that's where their names as big auteur directors, and they're all, all three are auteurs, absolutely, mm -hmm. um, come into play. But this length and that is, yeah, how much of that is because they're like, uh, you know what? People change, watch these things differently, and yeah. we're all we're all getting into a commercial version. Yeah, you know, that's even true. myself, I have. So I bumped up my subscription on Netflix to see the first part of Rebel Moon. I was kind of excited about it. I, as people who've seen my Cedar Skip It review, I was my <laughs> my optimism was not rewarded. <laughs> that said, yeah. Um I bumped up so I bumped up my subscription for 4K. Then right after that I had it diarized. I'm down to 5.99 and I'll live with some some commercials. Yeah. And what to Netflix do they go? Don't care. We're going to make money off of Rob either way. He's still going to watch Rebel Moon Part 2 and mm. we'll have not a million commercials, but we'll have commercials there. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Prime just came out with, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know if you've seen it. And this is in Canada. I'm not sure if this is happening in other markets, but in Canada, you and I both received emails saying, hey, for $2.99 a month, we're going to bring commercials. But for $2.99 a month, you don't have to see them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I'm I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure that's gonna that's... be the three bucks is worth avoiding commercials there, but it all it's all part of a piece, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, podcasts, um, you know, you pay a little more and you get your or, or you, you, you know, give us a Patreon the thing, uh, you know. Hand up and, uh, you know, we'll take away the ads for you, you know, which isn't a big thing for me on podcasts, but. Uh. Walt says, uh, <laughs> Walt says, what? 275 million? It's only 110 minutes long? <laughs> Three questions. We was robbed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, I, yeah, is, is that where these guys are thinking, yeah, you got to give us, we need some miles. <laughs> mm. We need some pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, what the heck? Make it, even if you insist on having a theatrical release, there's got to be some way to give us, you know, a bit more of an episodic feel. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure you've got that in this. I, I don't know if I brought this film into the edit suite, I'd be able to logically pick, unless I started moving stuff around. And, and maybe it'd be worth that. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jim, we are we are getting late. Uh, let's move into final thoughts. Uh, and why don't you... Why don't you go first? Sure. Yeah. Um, I would say one thing we hadn't mentioned yet is the, uh, the score, um, done by the late, uh, the late, uh, Canadian musician, Robbie, Robbie Robertson, Robertson, um, which was, I thought great. I mean, it, it was noticeable and they always say, Oh, if you notice it, that's a bad thing. I don't know if that was the case here uh and it wasn't like i was watching the movie just to listen to the soundtrack but i thought he did a great job it, it gave the film a real sort of aural texture that's a-u-r-a-l <laughs> and uh you know i thought i thought he did a really good job and it, it sort of situated it in a place and a time uh and i have to think if he wasn't ill uh, that he might have actually been in the film because there's like five musicians i don't know if you noticed but jason isbell's uh sturgill simpson jack white is at the very end 
um and a couple others too but um yeah so i i i uh, I can't remember if Robbie is nominated for an Academy Award, but that'll be he interesting is. to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, is I thought it was sort of an interesting way to end it. In a way, uh, Scorsese, I think one of the more interesting things in this movie is the way that it ended in the form of a radio play. So you don't even really get the, you know, you don't get the reminiscent of another courthouse scene, uh, the Robert De Niro and the Untouchables, you don't get the horrified reaction when he's found guilty and the, the shouting and the screaming. The last time you see him on the screen, yeah. he's sort of pleading with Ernest, uh, Leo's Ernest, uh, to, to, you know, to toe the line and, you know, be loyal to the family and that sort of thing. And it's almost pathetic. Um, and, and you, do, you don't get to see that anger or that, 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 uh, his reaction in, in a way, if, if that's what you're expecting after three hours of a movie, uh, in, in a kind of a tricky way, Scorsese is he sort of, um, takes that away from you. Uh, yeah. and, uh, I thought it was a really interesting choice. Uh, and I, and I think what he was doing there is maybe reminding us that, w you know, while this happened to real people, we're still watching an entertainment. Uh, and I, and I sort of thought uh, that that had, had some, uh, yeah, that had a little bit of an interesting uh, end for me. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's that's an interesting point, and I may want to go back and rewatch some sections, especially based on our conversation. Mm. Um, for me, Jim, all I can think of is. I don't think I'm going to remember this movie in six months. The It got nominated for 10 Oscars. And, well, yeah, everyone who watches the podcast knows my opinion of the Oscars. Mm. Uh, not saying that Ms. Gladstone doesn't deserve all the praise she's got. And... No one was phoning it in on this movie, even Scorsese. <laughs> um, mm. That said, yeah, I I think this will be a maybe not forgettable, but not the not the masterpiece some people love to that word that people love to throw around. Oh my God, yes. You know, it's it's it that isn't this, and I think this story deserves a different take this mm -hmm. story this the root of it the the uh osage uh the, the these murders this deserves another pass and it doesn't necessarily it doesn't have to be a an indigenous an indigenous filmmaker although that would be great uh, but someone who is like, hey, I'm going to look at this from like to center the indigenous indigenous experience and to involve some of the context or go all your ghosts and make it really weird. <laughs> but still center yeah. it on uh, Millie's experience or that that indigenous experience. That's I think this. Historical. Period deserves a, another take and mm. uh, deserves a better take. Not that this is awful, but a better take. And, uh, and, and I'll be waiting for that, I think. And until then, like I've said at the beginning of the show, uh, and the link is in the description, there is a great, and it's only half an hour, a great little documentary from PBS in Oklahoma about the reign of terror. All right. Uh, Ooh, 30 minutes. That's a little too long. I'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> I've already invested three and a half hours. Yeah, exactly. Rob. <laughs> yeah. Um, quick, uh, quick comment, quick shout out to Walt and, uh, uh, to Walt in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, he made a great last comment asking about, Thelma Shoemaker, of course, 
Scorsese's longtime editor and why she wasn't the editor on this project. It could very well be. I think she just retired. Um, but I don't know that for a fact. No, it uh, says on, on Wikipedia. It does say on Wikipedia that she is the editor here. Oh, does she? Algerian born. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, but oh, who knows? I didn't. I did not catch that play. Like I know mm -hmm. it was nominated for that Oscar. You know what? That's something worthy of uh, further examination. Sure. We'll Alrighty, uh, everybody. Of course, one last time. If, we would really love you to, if you like this kind of thing and want to see more of it, please like, subscribe, and ringy-ding that bell. And uh, before we uh, Look sign Look at off. how it continues to ring even after Chips put the bell down. That's yep. the kind of amazing content we provide to you. Um, Manitoba PBS. Whoopsies. That's, uh, <laughs> never mind that. Uh, and before we go to, uh, one last thing, uh, the great Norman Jewison, fantastic, uh, Canadian director passed away last week. Ooh. So, uh, wow. Yeah. Good yeah. night. Uh, Mr. Jewison. Good night, Mr. Jewison. All right. Well, on that note, everybody, thank you all so very much for coming out and see you, Walt. Uh, see you, Jelly yeah. Duck. Uh, Get when, L. in the replay, we won't have any of those muting problems because I'll be editing <laughs> that out. <laughs> Good night.